Hello, my name is Wade Nimmer and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. Recently I was asked by the Rotary Foundation to serve as what's called a technical cadre uh, where I will actually be taking a look at and evaluating pretty much all of the water projects being done around the world. Recently I had the opportunity to actually travel to um, Matamoros, Mexico in the state of uh, Tamaulipas and to do this it was a, actually a whirlwind trip. I left we uh, arrived in, believe it or not, Brownsville, Texas, stayed there from 2 o'clock in the morning. The next morning at 6.30, we were on the road going into Mexico to evaluate these projects. That whole trip was done in a day. I actually returned back home, was on the airplane returning the next morning at 4 o'clock in the morning. So you can tell that this, these trips are uh, actually pretty intense. This trip specifically was to evaluate a water project that was being done in the uh, Matamoros area. And the idea of it was that it was supposed to bring water, uh, drinking water and domestic water to different communities. A total of 14 different communities that were to service 1,000, I'm sorry, 16,680 people. So um, it was a pretty substantial project. This project itself um, was funded with the amount of $83,000 and the project was to actually put in a piping system that was going to be distributed through the local government into each and every one of these different communities, or they call them colonias. What was uh, interesting that I found is that the piping itself was actually distributing out with a supply source of about a 14-inch pipe. So it was pretty substantial as far as the water itself. If you've been to the area, which is the very southern point of Texas and that part of, um, part of Mexico, you'll know that it's extremely flat. Water barely, barely drains off of these areas, so most of it sits. So we had a few challenges on that area too, is how to push these. So there's uh, boost pumps throughout the system also that this covered. The square area of the actual project site itself was about four square miles. So it wasn't large, but uh, it still was enough to um, create issues with the distribution system itself. I'm gonna start by uh, giving you a presentation of some of the photos that I took from this site. With the first site here, this uh, is the group that actually met me. And as you can see, the uh, membership was 33 members strong. These were the people that actually met me. They were in charge of the project. These are the uh, ladies, uh, Rotarian ladies of the Rotary Club of Matamoros Profesional. So um, they are actually the ones that were in charge of distributing out and doing the, the systems. What was interesting is, as you can see, this picture was taken more or less during the uh, holiday season. And being done at the holiday season, you'll see the tree in the background, but this picture was taken at 2 o'clock in the morning. So uh, we were getting ready to get a little bit of sleep there before we jumped out into the next excursion. The next picture um, is a picture that was uh, taken during the actual site visit. We were, uh, had the opportunity to visit one of the sites and in this one specific site area, what we looked at were um, meeting with people that were involved with it, the Rotarians, the government people that were involved with the city itself, and also some of the members that were receiving the water. So it was kind of a cross-section of everything. We started with this walk, and along the way we stopped at different households to talk and interview with them. And as we stopped and talked to these different people, we wanted to know what the benefits of the water systems were. So we looked at how the people were receiving the water, the success factors of it, how much they were paying, and whether or not their living conditions had improved. So all these questions had to be resolved and questioned by me, filled out with uh, that information that was then distributed into the Rotary Foundation. I was accompanied by a number of Rotarians. Uh, this group here, as you can see by the shirts that they wear, these were the Rotarian members of that specific club. The water engineer also was a member of a, a Rotary Club, a different Rotary Club, and his job was to actually work with the government because he was with them in doing the distribution system. So he was very knowledgeable on the project itself and what was being done, um, the success factors, how many people were receiving water because that number of 16,680 was a question that I had to constantly ask about. The interesting part of that was at this point in time we realized or I realized that of the 16,600 people there were about 3,400, 3,500 families in this given area that was going to be given the water to. 
the interesting point then was that I asked about that one, and they said roughly only 10% of the people had actually received water to date, even though the piping was put in place. And so I asked him what was the holdup, what the drawbacks were, and he pointed out in this picture to me that um, with the water costing X amount of money and the project already being funded, in order for a household to actually receive the water, what they would have to do then is actually sign a contract verifying and confirming that they're willing to be taxed a total of $3.50 a month for water to be piped into their house, which um, seems like, well, it, it's kind of a lot of money. However, if you look at the current conditions of these households, they were spending about uh, $3.50 a week for water to be brought in by truck that would fill then the, the cisterns that they had in place. So actually having domestic lines available for one quarter of the price was pretty tantalizing. And it was a project that they're working on. They just had not had enough time to actually confirm these contracts themselves. And so this is what I'm looking at on the paperwork itself. Um, the lady that you see in this picture, she, her job was to be as a, basically the coordinator within the community. She was the chair of the water committee, and her job was to go ahead and evaluate who wanted to have the work done, what the conditions were like, if in fact the people were willing to work with it, and she was to document then not only the water usage, but also the education of how this water was being handled. If in fact the water was being handled safely, properly, or if in fact there had to be some other um, secondary education put in place to help these people out. So this is uh, the job. The gentleman that you see behind me, he's actually one of the community people. And as a community person, um, he became essential as far as how it was working, if in fact he was being um, aided um, and helped with the water project itself, or if he was being left out. In his case, actually, he had not yet received water. He was waiting for the hookup. He had his application put in and was waiting, uh, actually very patiently, to see if, in fact, that hookup was going to be done and when. One of the um, other areas that we looked at um, in this picture here shows the person in the middle is actually the water engineer. As a water engineer, his job is to make sure that he coordinates the inst installation with not only the government, but also with the households themselves. So as this 14-inch pipe gets laid down the center of the street, he has to put out these side spurs. Uh, the connect-ups, the stub-ups for future connections to each and every one of these households. And so we are looking right now at one of the areas where it's going to be uh, installed in the near future. And what we're standing on, as you see the tractor marks, those tractor marks actually indicate that the tractor trenching had actually been done and just recently compacted back over again. Again, these are put in the street areas, and this, when I say street, it's more or less just dirt, dirt um, roadways. One of the sites that I visited, and this is one that I documented, shows how the water actually comes into the household. You see the small pipe that I'm standing next to, that's a half inch PVC pipe. Um, that actually comes from the street line, and then it runs into the household and also into the latrine or the water tank that you see behind it. So this is part of the system that's been put in place. The difference, or I would say the objective of this project, Unlike most of the projects where I'm looking at water and, and water specifically for drinking and consumption, this project was actually set in place for water within a household. So the household would then have water to wash with, water for their bathrooms, water they could potentially drink once it was filtered, but um, it would actually supply and service the water. Up until this point in time, most of the households had either no water or a limited amount of water. And so you could imagine then uh, the hygiene issues of having dirty clothes, uh, dirty areas in the kitchen, uh, not having water to actually work with, to drink or wash things off, so, uh, or, or even bathe with. And so this became an essential part of the project. And one part that I realized that we don't re oftentimes look at. We look at drinking water, but we don't look at the actual water for hygiene care. And so this project was uh, very unique. I hadn't yet to uh, see one of these, and it's the first time I've seen it. The project itself shows the water. The water was ample in supply. And this is the, the local hookup, what the actual hookup looks like there. What I found is that these people, um, as we go forward and take a look at the projects itself, they are very cautious uh, on using the water. They don't use a lot of water. The, the water that they do use 
is water that they're going to be using specifically for a specific use. In other words, they don't leave the water faucets running. The only time that they do do that is to fill the tanks or the cisterns that you will see up on top of each and every one of these things. The picture that we show with the cistern on top actually shows a water project um, and actually the latrine system itself being put in place. That latrine is now actually part of a washing station and that washing station then uh, is actually piped out using a four inch pipe drain into um, an actual community center. And this community center line goes throughout into the street, same line that's, well, the same basic trench that is being used for the um, water. Right alongside of it, we actually have drains now that will pick up the sewage water. And so um, those are separated out. They are then taken into separating tanks. And so we don't have the cross-contamination of that. But you can see the rusticness of each and every one of those. This next picture that you see is actually a picture of the group that we had um, following me around. You see the Rotarians in the background and in the foreground, along with um, some people from the government, the city government, and also some of the community people. They were more fascinated in finding out what was going on, who we were, and what I find also interesting when I go on these trips is that as I come in as an evaluator, and I'm actually evaluating the project itself for consistency, for make sure that the, the money's being used correctly, um, and to see if I can improve the process in any way and the project. Uh, they bring me along, and I'm actually treated as kind of a celebrity, which is kind of an interesting fact, because I do represent Rotary International. And um, I share this with you Rotarians because of the fact that what we do as Rotarians is looked upon with great respect around the world. And that is one area where I think we don't see that because as Rotarians yourself, as you contribute these funds to the foundation, you don't really get the effect of what it's like at the other end of it. So when I go to these areas, like in Mexico here in uh, Matamoros, when you go into these colonies, you're actually treated as, as you would a celebrity or somebody of very high status just because you represent some of the big efforts that we as Rotarians do worldwide for humanity. This next picture is a picture that we took. Uh, this shows the actual government people that I'm working with. Uh, the gentleman that's the tallest one, uh, the older gentleman there, he's actually a Rotarian, past president of one of the other Rotary Clubs. And at one of the other Rotary Clubs, uh, the reason that they weren't involved with this one is because the Houston Club, uh, I'll be talking about them shortly, was actually sponsoring this project along with the Matamoros uh, Professional Club. Uh, he actually serves as the water director for this area, so it was a great connection to have. And he talked about the benefits of working directly with Rotary and Rotarians. This picture I, I took is with the president of the Rotary Club of Matamoros Professional and also with the staff of the, um, the government. And they were more than happy to jump in there and actually asked me to take this picture. So they were the one that posed and set up the picture for me because of the fact that they're very proud to be part of this process also. I took this picture. This picture kind of shows the uh, streetscapes. What I see in this area here, as you notice, there's no hills anywhere in sight. It's all dirt roads. This is the one store that they have in that whole community. Most people walk. They don't have cars or vehicles in this area. That's, uh, and their jobs, most of them, they work either in the agriculture area or they do home um, projects. Things like uh, sewing, uh, making things, making toys, things like that is what they do in the household. So there's really not a lot of money. The other part that I thought fascinating about this project was the fact that this being the one store, most of what they had in there was processed foods. They had sodas, they had waters there, they had candies, uh, chips, and a lot of things like that. So you wonder if, in fact, this water project was going to be able to help that. I looked at this project realizing that this was phase two of a three-part project. I wanted to see what phase one was like because this was done roughly five years before that, and I could see the actual um, results um, of that to see if, in fact, it was sustainable as far as the project itself. The picture here is a picture that I took showing the, uh, it's a marquee basically, it's a big sign that they used. This sign uh, represents uh, the two clubs that were involved. You have the uh, University uh, Area Houston Club, West University, Western University, and also the Rotary Club of Matamoros Professional. So they're very proud in putting this up. Believe it or not, and I'm going to share this with those of you that do do global grants. 
$500 is an amount that you could actually put into the grant, right into the grant to mark out your projects, whether you do it individually or whether you do it as a stand or a mark out at the beginning of a community is something that you probably want to include in this one. So this one was actually funded by a portion of the global grant project itself. Uh, you can see the two districts. They would have worked hand in hand for a number of projects and I think uh, that in itself makes it a pretty successful project. The next picture is a picture I took with the uh, members of the Rotary Club. You'll see in that picture, uh, again, pretty much all women. This uh, club of 33 has 32 women and only one gentleman that's a member of the club. So um, very active. I have found worldwide that the women clubs are probably the most active. They get the most work done. This is the, pre uh, the president. Uh, we are now visiting a different area. This is the first phase of the project itself. So this was a completed project, a project that was finished up, I believe, in 2012 or 13. So this project shows the actual results. If you look at what she's doing with the water projects and the project itself, how it's being implemented, you'll see that the living conditions has substantially changed from the other pictures I showed you. You have now concrete floors. You have people now that are working with the water, having a better understanding of how it's being used. And so I think that's an important part of it. So this was one of those instances where I actually got to see what this potential project would look like in another few years. The picture that I have here now shows a gentleman that was actually one of the recipients of one of the original projects. He is um, actually a firefighter. He works as a firefighter professionally. And before this time, he had no water. He talked about not being able to wash his clothes, bathe, or do anything because he didn't have enough water. The water that they used was up on top of it in a tank. And that tank was used mostly for drinking water. So he said the hardest part was to keep his clothing clean. And if you look at or think about the picture that I showed you before in the other community, and then you look at the picture of this family here, you'll see that the hygiene, their cleanliness and everything is substantially improved in that little bit of time, four or five years there. So um, you'll see it's all concreted in. The other interesting part is that fireplace that you have behind them actually is sitting in a water cistern that they used to use to store water that they used for the household. Now they're using it for a fire pit and some uh, secondary use. Completely concreted in, no dirt anywhere on the site. It was a beautiful, beautiful home. And as you can see, the, the people that were living there are very clean as far as their living conditions, their hygiene, all of the above. The project itself, this being the second phase, um, the gentleman, by the way, in that last picture was uh, a firefighter, but he was also the chairman of the water project in that community. So he looked at um, a lot of those, the, again, a picture of the cistern itself and uh, the fireplace and what it's being used for now. So they're using it for an outdoor barbecue area, which is kind of nice because you can't barbecue anything too close to the house so that smoke comes right into the house. Many of the homes do not have windows. This, this house actually did, but uh, he was probably one of the more well-to-do people. As a firefighter, he had actually um, a, a standard income. Some people are fairly sporadic with the incomes that they do have. I took this picture also of the firefighter. Um, you can see his house in the background. He is standing right next to a concrete, I'm sorry, a plastic cap. And this plastic lid represents a, a leach line where the, the uh, sewer from his house actually comes into. And that was installed by the local municipality. Currently, it's actually sitting in a tank itself. However, in the future, these, there's plans to have all of these houses connected up using a sewer um, pipeline, piping system. And so this is set up and ready to go for a piping system in the near future. Uh, that will probably happen within the next five to ten years. Uh, in the meantime, what they have is they've created these uh, septic systems at each and every one of the households. So it's kind of a good system to have. Again, they're addressing water. It shows that they have education, water and sanitation, both needs. And because of that, um, it, it became pretty important for me to see that they have an education and background understanding of how these projects work. This picture again is a picture of the backyard of that same household. And you can see now they're growing fruit. They have food back there, vegetables, all of the above are all part of now the process and culture that they have. Before this time, they couldn't grow anything because they didn't have water. Now they have fruits, they have vegetables that they can grow and raise in each of these households. And they're taking advantage of it. 
Um, there's a lot of areas now where they're planting new crops, including vegetables and flower crops that they use in the house. Vegetables, fruits, everything were grown at that house and were used interior uh, in the house for cooking, uh, cooking needs and all of the above. So um, I think part of that shows the fact that this system and project, even though it did not address water specifically for consuming, for drinking, um, still had a marked improvement on the way that these people now live. I had an opportunity then to walk back and forth down some of the other uh, neighborhoods. And this picture here was a picture of the next door neighbor. And if you recall back at the other picture from uh, the ones where the projects were being implemented to this picture now, you can see the marked improvement as far as the houses, how they're being built, um, the quality of construction, the, uh, I, I would say, the more lavish type of, or luxury type of living that they have now because of the fact that they now have water. So I think that is also going to help itself in elevating the living conditions throughout. I then went back to the, uh, the water committee, uh, the water group organization at the uh, municipality uh, in Matamoros, and we met and we talked about what was next, the future of that. I asked for some documents, some reports. Um, one of the areas I needed to have reports and that they did not include were um, health reports, clinical uh, health reports. So I needed to know where the community stood as far as their health, as far as bad water, if water was an issue, if um, hygiene was an issue, if nutrition was an issue, and basically get an overview of what was going on. And so at this meeting then, they were able to supply me with the uh, medical reports of that. They also showed me the contracts that were being signed by these people. Um, if you recall, it was $3.50 to hook up to the um, domestic water line that they had there. And I wanted to see what that contract looked like, if in fact it was fair, if it made sense, and if it was something that any person that was living on that street, no matter, uh, regardless of their income, could actually afford to do. Um, this proved to be a fact. Uh, at $3.50 to hook up water, uh, that became actually also a monthly charge. And so for $3.50 a month, they would have running water, in, like, literally, in their households. And so that did prove to be a very successful process and uh, one of the reasons why um, I'm pushing this project forward as one of the more successful stories. Besides that, um, we talked about three phases. Actually, phase one was done. That was the pictures that I just showed you with the gentleman that, um, that was a firefighter. Phase two is the one that I took a look at and I shared with you the actual site visit. Phase three and phase four are actually, actually being put into place right now. In that area, the large pipelines, the 12-inch and 14-inch pipes, actually have been already installed into the street. So now it's a matter of putting the contracts out there and having the hookups now put into place. And so it's all about the contracts being signed. That will make the big difference for that one. This is my last picture. The last picture I wanted to share with you because one of the great things about being in Rotary and doing the work that we do do is that I get to meet with the people in the different communities and the different clubs. This club here specifically is the Rotary Club of uh, Matamoros Professional. And they took me out. Um, <laughs> I was there for roughly 12 hours uh, to evaluate the projects. In the 12 hours, I think they fed me 12 full meals because uh, it was all about the meetings and the meeting places were all around food. Uh, this was one of the restaurants we went to. I'm showing uh, one of the gifts that they gave me. This club actually gave me a shirt, uh, a guy who had a shirt. And uh, the gentleman that owned it was a very good friend of the Rotary Club there also was uh, one of the people that sponsor a lot of the Rotary projects that they do there. The club that you see, uh, with the exception of one gentleman that is on your extreme right, his name is Arturo, uh, are all women. Uh, Arturo is the, the one person, the one gentleman of the club, and this club does extremely a lot of work. I went through and we did one quick tour. I had about two hours loose, least, least, least time where I could run around and take a look at uh, what was going on with this club. And in this leisure time that I had, they showed me eight different projects that we were in the process of doing. So it was an amazing thing. Um, what I did have to say about this club is that each and every one of them were very hardworking. And if you also notice in the picture, um, most of them are fairly young. The, these women in this club are, are hardworking. Uh, the average in age from 26 all the way up to uh, some of the senior leaders of this club. And this club was a 17-year-old club, started in 2001. And they had done probably an average of about four to five projects 
each year in that amount of time. Uh, currently, it probably bumped it back up to between eight and 12 different projects, including the global grants that you've seen. Those uh, global grants will represent four grants in that given area, which are huge. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they were only the only four global grants ever done in that area also, even though Matamoros has, I understand, four different clubs uh, in that group. I may be wrong, it was between four and six, but um, the activity that they did was pretty amazing. The dinner that we had was an exclusive, very nice area, and again, um, what I had to tell you is that they brought me in from Brownsville, Texas, early morning. We went down into Matamoros right after that. We spent the day there. I was actually there from 7, 8 in the morning to probably 10 or 11 o'clock at night. At that time, about 11 o'clock, we then traveled back across the border. So I stayed. My hotel was actually in Texas, which was kind of unusual, and it was a one-day event stop. So that made it kind of unique. The other thing that I found fascinating about uh, the area itself is that when they took me out to eat in these different restaurants in different areas, everybody knew them. These Rotarians stood out. And everybody, I'm talking probably 50% of the people that I saw in these restaurants, in these stores, and in these neighborhoods, all came and said hello to the Rotarians and thanked them for all the work they were doing. They talked about everything different from educational projects, school projects, clothing projects, uh, you name it, they had, they had been involved with it. And so the mark that these ladies put on, and the one gentleman, Arturo, sorry about that, was that uh, they, they work extremely hard and they do a lot of good things. They take the time at this meeting itself that I went to, and we talked about the project that I had just evaluated over that, that day, they talked about another six projects that they were working on. So again, um, when we in the United States talk about how active we are, we have no idea how hard people are working around the world for Rotary. So um, these different clubs, as I see them around the world, uh, my hat's off to them because they're doing outstanding things. They may not all be able to fund these projects, but they look for partners. And when they look for partners that are people like us where we could partner in with them, and that is one of the advantages that we as Rotarians have is that we can make these impacts around the world through a friendship a family, a family of Rotary. And with that, I wanted to share this project with you because these are some of the great things we do in Rotary. And I will have another project. Uh, the reason I came back and did that in one day is because I am leaving, or I was supposed to leave right after that from Mexico. I was supposed to fly into Haiti to evaluate two more projects. Fortunately for me, the project in Haiti was actually postponed due to uh, protesting and rioting, but um, I've been instructed that they'll travel back there within the next month. So I will be in there for that one. I will do another show on that because I do want to show what we as Rotarians do around the world. With that, thank you very much for your time, your effort, and everything we do for Rotary. We'll see you next time.